has been working with HSL, has been with a ton of teams, and now he's with Wavecheck. He's going to be rocking at that Orisa. On the other side of things, XL2 has been pretty standard and easy going for the season, only dropping their first loss to Envy, and XL2 Academy are going to be coming in. Moira is becoming so much more popular, and we're going to see Haku on this Moira as we start out with Sanctum. On XL2, you got the boots, you got the hands. On Wavecheck, you got the halt that's going to help you get those environmental kills, which can be so very important and game-changing here on Sanctum, as we're going to see both of these teams approach each other. Progi's going to go ahead and use that shield, and, you know, do a couple things, Jade. In the meantime, is going to get that environmental kill. We talked about those a little bit earlier, and when you drop that shield as a risk, you're kind of locked behind it for the time being before you can open up the point just like Jade did, or do that trench warfare, which is slowly but surely approach the point and eventually win. Exactly. Wave check. Not going to be able to tap the point first. They're going to give away 7%, but in the end, Jade helping pull things back with his DPS counterpart iced on that Hanzo. So, wave check, despite that early loss, this has been something, you know, that we've seen happen more and more with a lot of these teams is the main tank dies first, and it's not necessarily the death sentence that we've grown used to when we see the Goats v. Goats mirror matchup. A lot of times, you can still bring it back with sufficient DPS firepower. So now, XL2 with Bianca on the D.Va is going to have to make another engagement here. And of course, Gig has an opportunity to open with this primal, but isolating people is going to be really difficult. Yeah, XL2 Academy, well, there's most of their roster has been pretty standard. Bianca is going to be a new one in this first round. Is Jade going to use that Rocket Barrage? Take Bianca out of that mech, but isn't able to secure the full kill. But Wave Check sitting pretty right now on the point at 40%. Yeah, this is, um, Haku has the Coalescence right now, but I wonder if it would be worth it to swap over to a Zenyatta or maybe an Ana type look because Wave Check right now very well supported uh, with the Ana Mercy combo, and Moira doesn't really offer a ton of utility coming up against this wave check composition. She doesn't really have that shield shredding, that target focusing that a Zen would provide with the Discord orb, and no resurrection, no free do overs either. But they have tools, they got EMP, they got coalescence, and that combo in and of itself is often enough to ground the bird. XL2 Academy gonna use that EMP. Proki is going to get hacked, but that's going to be enough. And something that Haku is able to use is that coalescence. It's one of the best ways to make sure the bunker has to move around and goes through all of those shields. It's an amazing way to force those rotations, but with Jade creating help from above, it's going to be a little bit harder for XL2 Academy to try to approach this point. The stall was definitely there. Wave Checker one fight away from winning the round. Yeah, and so XL2, not, this is not quite what we've grown used to. This is the new XL2 look. They've been pretty dominant in some of their... Uh, matchups here at Wavecheck really pushing them once again this unsigned team. The re-engagement is going to be quite difficult. Hegon is packed, no blizzard for now. XL2 Academy are going to use the rally to try to hold on to at this point and uh, Wavecheck could potentially use that blizzard as well. Panic is going to go ahead and use that nano gig using the primal rate to try to get to the backlight, which he does. He's trying to make sure the Orisa has a hard time putting down that bunker, making sure that his team is going to be safe behind that shield. But as of right now, he's actually just going to go back to the objective. They see that space. Haku did go down in the middle of that fight. XL2 still owns the point, but they're very, oh no, that's going to be a big deal. Bianca's going to eat the dragons, but Jade once again is going to come up with the kill from the sky. If it wasn't for Jade, a lot of the damage output from Wave Check wouldn't be as good as XL2 Academy are going to be losing this fight. The question is, are they going to be able to come back? Yeah, and that's the hard thing. Skeetal is going to swap onto his tried and true Doomfist. Will he be able to perform a miracle for his team once again? There's only four more seconds to find out as Buds goes down. So Wave Check can be pretty clear with that barrage in hand, but they do need their main tank. It's not all over yet for XL2. They're going to get it res though, but a nice rocket punch into Hanzo's face is going to bring him down, but the trades are there. XL2 Academy are going to feel really good about this Doomfist right now as they were even able to get back onto the point. That was the first question. Not only are they doing just that, they're potentially going to be able to take it right back off the back of Speedily's fist. XL2 Academy should be able to flip this once more. Missed opportunity for Wavecheck to secure the round. Yeah, just a little bit unlucky. Maybe getting too comfortable. Jay didn't have an opportunity to use that barrage. Used it on the entry in the last time he had it. It's a great, pretty good success. And if you're feeling that the drive-by gobbling shenanigans of Bianca feels familiar, this is actually an alias of Kirby. So XL2 are actually still with the same roster. Wavecheck have a ton of tools. Yeah, a little bit to bait. Sometimes you want to feel a little bit more feminine, Bianca. But Ice gonna let those dragons fly. Does provide a bit of zoning and panic goes down. And he actually manages to catch a Samba. 
I'm very interested to see how Buds goes down during that fight. Is Giga going to get frozen? But the maze going to go down anyway. Jay trying his best to continue being that carry in the sky. But as of right now, it's not working. Is at 99%. Wave check seems that they're going to seed this around after being ahead almost the entire time. XL2 Academy are primed to take this. The overtime wake is about to come it down, but no, the Wrecking Ball is able to come it right back, and Jade had to switch just to make it back onto the point, but once again, some Doomfish shenanigans could potentially bring Wave Check back into this. It happened for XL2, it might happen for Wave Check now, but XL2 Academy are coming up with the kills, and with that EMP and Ice going back down, this should be the round for XL2 Academy. Very interesting round on Sanctum. Wave Check seemed to be in control for the majority of the round, but near the end at 99% when they had an opportunity to lock it in, the fist comes in and Mr. Fisto breaks it to you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Ouch, get fisted. That's going to be pretty painful for Wave Check, giving up such a great early opportunity there. But hey, Progi, new member on the team. And so there are going to be a little bit of adjustment periods. I feel like I say this very often. We've seen a lot of movement in these rosters and contenders, especially this season. But there's not much more time, so Wave Check's got to lock it up because right now XL2 firing on all cylinders and not needing to swap onto a Zenyatta or an Ana in the end. So the Moira working out quite well. And I am very, very curious what the team's plans are in the future because we are going to be looking at a 2-2-2 roll lock for the playoffs. As of right now, it looks like most teams are just going with that tried and true, what they've gotten used to powering through the rest of the season before they look to the future. Seeding is on the line, especially for XL2 Academy as they want to lock up that second seed right here and right now. If Montreal lose the next game, they do grab that second seed no matter what I believe but XL2 need to get this done first. They've got to take down wave checks. They're going to want to do it in that sweep as well. That map win loss could come in handy a little bit later on in the season, which we're at the end game now for the season as Jay's going to put the end game down for Buds back at the spawn. XL2 Academy also going to be painted purple and wave check going to take this first point. XL2 Academy were able to flip it during the fight, but wave check are going to take it and control it another repeat of what happened on Sanctum. So now that Wave Check own it, they just gotta plant their heels down and keep a hold. It's gonna be a lot easier said than done though. Jade has really been amazing on this Fara so far, but XL2 Academy with the comp that they're running, triple support, they're gonna have superior brawling ability on the objective. So it's up to the DPS of Wave Check to cut them down to size before they get there. You don't want this fair to feel free in the sky. You want that fair to feel that pressure. Bud's getting that initial pick. It's going to make Wave Check feel that pressure. Jade, though, does have the Rocket Barrage in the sky. He got is going to get hacked before being able to unleash that EMP. So no EMP available for them, but the Rocket Barrage does find some real estate. Bianca going down. XL2 Academy now functioning with just four people. Bud's getting another kill, though. It's going to make it a little bit easier for XL2 to flip this point. That, after cleaning up this Wrecking Ball, should be what comes next. XL2 now going to look at some pretty comfortable couple of next fights with the ultimates that they have ready. Well prepared, no Great Depression heading their way. Rally, EMP, and Primal all online for XL2. And Wave Check running with the heavier DPS lineup does need to get those heroes in position before they can launch their attack, which has been the difficulty for many teams swapping over to more DPS-centric comps. There's no guarantee of a team fight, so Panic's just going to nano him. Yeah, Jade's gonna get that nano, Progi gonna get that kill, and I think what happens there is there's a nano in the sky, everyone looks up, but then there's a wrecking ball on the ground as well, able to confirm that kill. Jade's gonna get another one. Jade's got a, a lot of notches right now under his belt, gets a ton of kills throughout these last two rounds, and he's gonna need someone else from wave check to follow him up with these kills. Iced is gonna be the one who could do that for him, but as of right now, it's just been all Jade this whole time for wave check, and it's not been enough for them to keep these points. Yeah, all the DPS need to be confirming those kills, finding a lot of value from those heroes, because that's half your team invested in those characters, and just RIP, uh, watching the Mercy drift off the side of the map is just so sad without her anchor, and Jade has been performing amazingly. You can see how much resource Wave Check puts behind his Farah and Nano, and one-shots kill squishies, but even so, one great player does not a team like he got to try to be that second. If he goes through both ways, three for XL2, two for Wave Check, but the casualties are going both ways. There's a trade that the DMAC onto Bianca needs that that Matrix will not be available. Ice is gonna use that Meteor Strike 
to slam right on to the baby diva, and now the point is going to be open for Mr. Fisto. Is he's going to cancel the coalescence to take Haku out of this? Yeah, it's definitely canceled. When you're dead, the one-shot power of Ice Doomfist now coming back in, helping pick off the dregs of XL2 Academy, who give it up at 99%. This is what we were talking about, right? Jade's doing the work, continue to do the work, and now he's got the Doomfist working behind him as well. Wave check now have their two DPS online, and you're seeing they're in control right now. This is going to come down to one fight and one fight only. Mm -hmm. Wave check now. They don't have the EMP opener that Bugs does have, but... Oh, amazing. amazing hack coming in from XL2. Bugs is a hero, my friend. Wave check is going to fall victim to the EMP. They're so focused on this possible big barrage combo, but no, he's going to get hacked out of it instead. And XL2 Academy are going to maintain their advantage throughout this fight. And once again, Wave check are going to exceed 90% and lose the round. They do everything to barely lose these <laughs> maps. It's been a common pattern throughout their entire time, other than last week here in Contenders. And even though they've been falling victim to some 4-0 scorelines, a lot of these maps, just like this one, were pretty close. Mm -hmm. XL2 Academy do take the round 2-0, but both teams make it to at least 90% on both rounds, as we see Gig here opening things up on Sanctum and Jade. Arguably, in my opinion, the best player on the field right now. Oh, I, I would certainly say so. Definitely standing above the rest, you know, with the help of those But boosters. his team just lost the map. Can you walk us through what exactly you have? Yes, the ice could have been coming in. It could have been doing a little bit more on the ground game as Jade was doing such a great job in the air. But how does Jade do so well, get so many kills that in the end his team loses? Well, the, it really just comes down to math and statistics. Wavecheck have one producer and XL2 have multiple options, right? So you saw Jade's opening barrage right there on Sanctum when Wavecheck tried that same trick on Village. XL2 is like, barrage me once, shame on me, barrage me a second time. Well, you're not gonna because you're hacked and now you're dead. So <laughs> XL2 Academy playing the little bit less flashy but much more consistent composition with that Moira Sombra Goats composition. and. Uh, Wave check, brilliant flashes again here and there from individual players, but sometimes all it takes is one drive by Gobble, you get that Dragon Strike eaten up, and that's one tool down. For those of you at home who are confused as to who Bianca is, it is Kirby, so he's a very familiar name to our friends in the XL2 Academy. On the other side of things, Progi on the main tank. This we're seeing him on Arisa right now. His performance, I think, left a little to be desired going through these rounds. Because if Jade is doing so well in the air, the ground game needs to be supported, and I think that is supported a lot by that tank. Yeah, I mean, he was certainly having not a super great time of it. Both of these rounds on Sanctum and Village being the only tank standing on the field, so kind of having to hold that space by himself against the might of both Gig and Bianca, speedily buds, whoever you know happens to be hassling him at the time. So that's definitely one of the disadvantages when you are running that solo main tank composition. We've seen a lot of teams that struggled with goats in the past swap over to that single main tank look, which is going to be going the way of the dodo come playoffs. So everybody you got to get used to probably the Winston Diva look is my is my guess. What I've heard from many pros is they believe that Winston and Diva are really going to come back into it. That's the old tried and true the dive buddies, right? right? Yeah. Who, we all remember the Winstons jumping in. The Diva got the back, got their back with the defense mm -hmm. majors to make sure the Winston can enter the back line. And no problem. And, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and so that wouldn't make sense. And it's actually pretty crazy to think that Overwatch, this kind of iteration, at least for, for the foreseeable future, is going to not look like this. What right, we're seeing so right now, it's going to be a very defined type of experience, I think, coming into the playoffs. We might see some new things. You might see some familiar things. But the triple DPS, the quad tank all that will not be av available going into the playoffs oh EU's crying a tear i know right now no more quad tank but i'm actually really curious if, how map dependent those tank duos support duos and tps duos will be because you think about a map like paris right here and while winston and diva are very strong on many maps orisa hog is the tank duo that comes to mind here on paris and xl2 academy showing half of that right now they have buds on the May once again, speedily on the junk ride. It's going to be Gig holding down the fort with the Uriza with KSP on the Widowmaker. 
excited to see Buds on this mate. We see him a lot on Asandra, so when he gets to flex onto some other characters, it's really nice to see. XL2 Academy was the first team, really, to start running you know, three DPS with your D.Va player being the most flexible person. Buds coming in, playing a little bit of D.Va, but mostly repping the May and the Sombra. Uh, Sky Fox is very well known for doing that right now as well, at least for the beginning part of the season. And it seems to be the way that things are going as KSP is going to get his headshot on the Widowmaker. And now Wave Check are either going to have to invest a res, that they do. And now the real stuff begins here for Wave Check because all kills are confirmed from XL2 for the next 30 seconds. Ooh. And KSP is going to find another one. That is a 6v5. It's funny, the way that Avast talked about this a little earlier was pretty, was pretty great. It's just kind of like, peak until you get the kill and then the res comes through the kill comes out then you reset it's pretty simple when it comes when you think about it like that i mean remember back when mercy was in every single composition and all those initial opening kills were rezzed and he got though gonna pick up one so og gonna have to flex that ability or not as wave check moving forward to try and cover that body Ooh, the Junkrat putting himself in a little bit of a vulnerable position by blasting himself upwards, which is going to land safely. He is going to push Higan out as well. KSP has those wall hacks, had those wall hacks, so they had a ton of information on Wave Check, but now could be an opportunity for Wave Check to try to find a pick. Jake getting close to that rocket barrage. Haku also very low. The nano, though, is available for him. That's going to be a nice tempo increase as Jake is going to get the nano. He's going to try to take some space as the Junkrat's so very low, but he's getting walked on that leash by the Mercy's OG to use the Valkyrie to keep XL2 in this fight. They have moved it off of the kiosk and onto the objective. They actually seem to be a little spread out. This is really bad news for XL2 Academy as Nerissa was on the objective and two people were here by kiosk, but the slave-making ability of XL2 is starting to show right now. Haku, one of the fraggiest of the supports that we have in this group, does find a pick. That's two on each side. Is KSP going to bring the numbers advantage to him? And look at that movement. That was pretty good. Man alive! No, if that shield wasn't there, KSP was about to pull a Logix and take this whole point back for his team single-handedly. And just like you said, Boop, the playmaking ability of XL2's DPS really on display there. It wasn't a question, just because their main tank died early that they were going to lose that point. It was possible for them to bring it back. Didn't happen this time around, as they do make some adjustments to this defense. Speedily now picking up the Roadhog, OG going on to the Zenyatta. So the Halt Hook combination is going to be in play here for XL2. Too, but it's OG taking incredibly low, but KSP still lighten up fools. That's three headshots in a row for KSP. That's three dinks and you're dead. Wave check now <laughs> going to have to try to come back onto the point. When you've got a Widowmaker like KSP on your team, it's you can put a lot of pressure on your Widowmaker to try to turn things around. We talked about that playmaking potential, and KSP certainly has just that. And he, a great Widowmaker like this almost works as, say, a Border Collie, you know, zoning the rest of the opponents away because you have to respect those sight lines. You can't stay stationary, or if the Widow doesn't bite you, the pig's going to hook you. I believe that was a Halt Hook combo coming in, helping speedily out on that hub. So XL2 Academy will continue with that numbers advantage. They're not going to go ahead and invest any reses in that. Why would you at this point in time as we do see Wave Check coming up on some ultimates? The Rocket Barrage has been held for a while. And in this situation, I know the objective proper is pretty open. So he's going to be pretty vulnerable to whatever damage comes his way. He's got to find the right place to use this barrage. But his team keeps dying before he has an opportunity to. Uh, and the, it, the Widow's sights were popped as well. Here we go from behind, helping take down both of those tanks. So now Wave Check again have a great opportunity, but they got to capitalize on it. Some beautiful movement coming in from Jade. That's two direct taking the Zenyatta out. And the Ana's going to be a little bit more difficult. Some good movement from him as well. XL2 Academy so very low. Wave Check are on the brink of potentially owning this objective. He's going to go ahead and use the Valkyrie to keep everyone alive. Gig's going to have to play around the shield a little bit better than that to survive as Jade is going to continue his dominance in at the air without that hook. It would have been all Jade the whole time, but now the rest of Wave Check needs to do a little bit extra work as XL2 Academy have been felt here on this point. Wave Check do take it in at the end. Too many casualties for XL2 to try to make any break for it for the objective. But some good stuff coming in from Wave Check. Yeah, a lot of Jade gouging a lot of deep a lot of jade. bleeds a lot of, jade. a lot of deep bleeds into that xl2 defense and in the end they couldn't put a tourniquet on stop that bleeding soon enough but 
sometimes all it takes is that one flick of a switch. You got that DPS feeling hot going in. You invest even the nano boost. I just, oh man, just that feeling when Afara is not afraid and you're a reset, you're fortified. It doesn't even matter. Four shots, you're in the ground. Nano Afara. Wave check right now really leaning heavily on Jade to produce in terms of damage, but it's been working out for them. XL2 Academy now have to also finish out this map. Wave check did it. Three minutes, 25 seconds still left in the bank. That's a good time for wave check, but again, they have this uncanny ability to then return the favor and give it their opponent just as good of a time at bank. They don't push their advantages like I wish that they could. Mm -hmm. They are still a young team. This is their first season in Contenders. They have good coaching. They've got good players. They have potential. Now they just got to start reaching it. We're six weeks into the season. That might be a little too late this time around, but you got to finish the season strong. And getting an upset onto XL2 Academy would throw this bracket into complete dis array and that <laughs> right. would be really fun to see so there is still a lot of uh, wave check still has some skin in the game when it comes to not trying to get relegated but also trying to affect everyone else in this group bar envy as the gates are going to open with wave check on the defensive side they're going to be running something similar as last time but this time around panic is on the tour yeah so kind of a modified clockwork composition right here Juby there, still on the Mercy. No May to be seen, but still a lot of zoning available between Ice Widow Scope and Panic's Torbjorn. Jade also can take to the skies and try and funnel XL2 into his teammates' sights, as XL2 are looking to push with a really similar composition. And I, I don't know how I feel about this. We've seen teams succeed with those Orisa offenses, but a lot of times it takes really long. Not when you doink the Orisa first, though, dang. It's still a 5v5 though, so it's still anyone's game. The Reza should be coming both ways. This means that everything from here on out is permanent from both of these teams. Ice is going to get another pot shot to the dome. XL2 Academy are going to be able to heal up. They they can get a little bit of respite by just taking a little time, waiting for KSP to get a pick. That he does, but a better pick coming the other way. No mercy for XL2 Academy means that XL2 should be rebuffed here. KSP still looking for some nice picks though as the halt hook comes through using the fortify to make sure that he doesn't get pulled into that pig. XL2 Academy now with the wall hacks hit the KSP to make something happen. Beautiful halt means that Buzz can take down that Orisa. The halt moved them in front of the shield and the Stormbow was all that they needed. It's a 66 again though as Juby gets another res off. Begone once again returns the kill. This is a pattern that's becoming apparent here at the beginning of XL2 Academy's pushing phase on Paris as another res comes through for XL2. Yeah, oh, though, this kill is going to likely be permanent. Juby popping that Valkyrie almost preemptively when they lost Brogy the first time around. And now XL2 can make it pretty easy walk onto the point that you gotta dance around these various DPS and the hog left on the point, but not going to be anything for Bud's Storm Arrow. And so the way that XL2 approached this point, very methodical, very consistent. A lot of times teams have difficulty pushing in with Orisa because her progress forward is very piecemeal. You gotta drop the shield, make a step forward, drop the shield, make it take another step forward. And all the while you can't be losing any backline and your DPS have to be finding those kills. And that's been a really difficult combination for a lot of teams to find, but XL2 Academy able to make it work. Everything can They're all going to go ahead and switch and over everyone. to the tried and true as well. It doesn't matter if you have ultimates. A lot of those characters don't function as well on the second point as they do on the first. I like what XL2 do. Wave check actually did a little bit of the opposite last time around. They had some ultimates, so they ran their comp into B instead of changing and ended up working out for them. So both ways can work, but I think what XL2 did is a little bit more consistent coming into the second point here as Jake is back on his tried and true. That Reinhardt that he's so very well known for. Wave check now does have that rocket barrage, so whenever XL2 decides to come onto the objective, they have to worry about the Farah in the air. They've been able to deal with it in the past. Jade has been a nuisance, though, for XL2 so far, as Brokey's gonna get very, very low, and the Mercy's gonna have to walk that horse on a leash himself. XL2 Academy also very low. It's a pretty even fight so far, as Jade's been pretty safe in the air. No one really challenging him just yet. No, XL2 Academy is still waiting for the Molten Core to die down before they make their hard engage, and that's going to be the turret down, but they lose the Lucio again, and this is one of the difficulties in pushing into so much damage. Ghosts oftentimes can seem impervious to anything that you do to them, but if you cut down their sources of healing, even Ghosts will fall, and because Jade is defending here, he has that bird's eye view 
constantly. He doesn't have to push through those hallways in order to take to the air. Everybody on wave check can man whatever angles they want, and XL2 Academy just kind of has to deal with it every time. So they're going to go and do a little bit of an adjustment as well as Panic on to the Anna. I like Panic on the Anna. I remember the last time, the last couple times we've seen him play, he seems to do better when he's on Anna versus the other support. So I'm definitely liking him on this character so far. As XL2 have a transcendence at the ready, Buzz is coming in onto that EMP, which is what they are waiting for anyway. They would have really loved for Jade to use that Rocket Barrage in that last push. But to no avail, he still has had it. He's had it since the beginning of you know, the tail end of point A. So it's been in his pocket for a while. XL2 Academy so very close to that EMP. Once Buds has it, we can definitely see them approach the point. Yeah, right now, you hear Hegon using his May powers to try and CC XL2 before they break onto the point proper. A lot of ultimate banked up for wave check. When XL2 do step onto the point, there we go. Blizzard this out. Blizzard is out. It takes a lot of the field away, but this should cancel a lot of that advantage. Wave check going to get a five man hack from this EMP. Jade going to go down. Still with that barrage in the back pocket. Wave check though, doing a very good job staying on this play, especially with the return kill on two Yankees. If this is a 5v5, but not for much longer, as Speedly gonna start popping off on that Brig. XL2 Academy have a huge numbers advantage. Will they be able to cap the point and finish things off? Looks likely to have the barrage ready, but oh, poor Jade. Not even gonna find a DMEC this time around, as XL2 finish things out as well on Paris. Remember what we said at the beginning of the game, WaveShark have this uncanny ability to let other teams match them when they do well, right? But when they're doing poorly, other teams don't give them that same type of respite. And this time around, it's going to be a very similar story for WaveShark. Two minutes and 51 seconds for XL2 Academy, who walked into that second point with a game plan and this is really great this has just been kind of like the graduation for them from last season yep. they had no game plan a lot of the time <laughs> going in from last season it feels like they're doing things with the roster up until like the very end of the yeah. season speedily and... was like a week five week six edition last season and, but yeah. once speedily got onto xl2 academy everything seemed to fall in line around him and they've found so much more success this sure season you know bud's I mean. definitely helping but i think someone that we definitely have to point out is this, their support but line the who's been ultra right consistent throughout the last couple series for XL2. Yeah, Haku's been particularly impressive on the Ana. Not not as much of a standout on the Zenyatta, but still doing what his team needs, especially as things have shifted over to the more Ana-centric favored uh, compositions. Wave check now going to be defending first. XL2 actually finished with less time than they did, so they're going to be taking their bite of the apple first off here on Paris round three as they look to repeat the same consistent performance that they had on their opening attack. So multiple angles here. You got two snipers, Widow and Hanzo in your lineup along with the halt hook between Gig and Haku. So wave check, they can't be resting, can't be getting too comfortable here because Jade is certainly a big part of why their composition works so well and he's very vulnerable to all four of those things. XL2 Academy and Wave Check, though, are utilizing the halt not just for the hook, but for the headshots, for the rockets, for a variety of different reasons. It's, such, it's one of the best setups in the entire game. It's depend on the Arrested to make sure he knows when and where to use this halt because it can be destructive to your opponents. A nice midi coming in from a Jade. Almost takes him out of the air. OG's going to have to hide, but he is going to tunnel a little bit and take, be taken down by Speedily, but there's a return kill on the other side that seems to be having very frequently. The res is coming both ways. Yes, it's another full 6v6. KSP trying to find the heads once more. But XL2 is going to be forced to give up all of that progress that they gained early on in the duel of the century right here. Uh, it's actually going to be Jade falling. Wave check probably going to have to let loose one of these ultimates to try and make things up. But he gone once again. This pig producing, bringing things back with that trade. This time around, it's not Jade who is producing, it's Hegon, and every time XL2 has been able to get a pick on the other side of things, Hegon gets another one. It happens once more, but this time, Wave Check opens with the pick. Panic's gonna use that Molten Core. That's gonna take a lot of the environment away from XL2 Academy. As you can see, they're trapped in this situation that they've gotten themselves into in these 
in the streets part of this first point, the, the reason why that's hard is there is no retreat. There is no retreat, and it's very difficult to push as well. Every route of engagement is super obvious, especially when you have the ability to fire a sonic arrow, pop in for sight, and know exactly where XL2 Academy are going to be headed. And with a Fara of Jade's caliber, you only take two shots to even take down a sniper, her greatest counter. So XL2 Academy is slowly now running out of time to pressure wave check this same combination that won them that earlier round wave checks adapted to it well buds is on the diva and has not gotten to that self-destruct which is one of the best ways to dislodge that bunker but when you're getting taken so low at the very beginning of these fights when they're automatically needing the res to start things off xlp academy having a hard time making any sort of momentum or any progress and he got once again going to get a return and kill with the rocket barrage not going to be Super valuable for wave check as XL2 Academy had an opening, but that has been a closed shut as they only have five seconds left and overtime might not even be initiated as wave check have a very, very nice defense. And now all they have to do is get one tick to win this map. Dang, son. Wave check standing strong off the back of their Farah Torbjorn defense. And a lot of times, Torbjorn is the first one to go when we see those defenses dismantled, right? One of the most, one of the squishier pieces of that Orisa bunker. But XL2 Academy couldn't really get anything going. You saw that KSP able to find a lot of headshots, uh, but... But no kills. Again, no kills. Yeah, and even when he did have a kill, maybe it was a trade. Gig was already down and they couldn't push forward and take that space. So things not lining up for XL2 Academy so far. Wave check now have three minutes and 25 seconds to just get one tick to win this map and tie this up one to one. That'd be a huge victory for Wave check and all of their fans back home. XL2 Academy will be running with this Arissa again. Just gig on Arissa doesn't seem to like it's the, the best match in the world, if that makes sense. It's it's all about gig making plays on the Reinhardt and potentially other main tanks but on the Arissa. He seems like it's a little bit, his hands are tied. Yeah, he is a lot more dependent upon his team's support before he makes that move. And while Supercharger is an extremely powerful ultimate, it's not really the shatters that we've grown used to. So, wave check. Have their win conditions set out for them. Three minutes and 25 seconds. That's, you know, pretty sizable and great just to take that single tick. Because, again, it's not about necessarily killing everybody. It's just about taking that space. They only need one tick. Wave check. You've got your goal. Now it's time to cross your teeth and dot your eyes and take that point. We believe wave check though gonna initially take some damage. Jade almost gets taken and down. Nice hot shot from KSP as XL2 and wave check gonna make some adjustments. XL2 on the defensive side are gonna have to fall victim to a Genji. Very interesting. We just saw some Genji shenanigans in our earlier matchups. So Wave Check deciding to all in on this mobility, and Froki's just going to roll his way. Well, he's going to take a nap, but trying to roll his way onto the point and immediately apply some pressure. And this is this is risky. Any time we start seeing a team change up their winning combinations, you got to be like. If it ain't broke, why are you trying to fix it? But with the composition that Wave Check are running, they only need a single combo to go off to wipe the point. It could be EMP into Blade, EMP into Dragon Blade, Nano Blade, always a really good option too. Again, a lot of pressure on Jade, but he seems to be thriving on it right now. I mean, at 19%, thriving might be a little, <laughs> might be a little much. As I say it, they lose their support line, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. still at 20%. I think that's mostly passive at that yeah, moment in time, so. He's thriving by not dying, and in the world of Genji, hey, you could argue that it's thriving. That's more than I can say for my Genji. That is very true. I'm barely XL surviving. It's so. true. XL2, not just Genji, XL2 Academy <laughs> now <laughs> also have the wall hacks. That's going to really help versus what Wavecheck is running because the Sombra, the Wrecking Ball, and the Genji can go on their own flanking path with no these wall hacks. They'll know exactly where they're coming from, and now they know how to defend against the res if they're able to get it on a gig. It's pretty important that they do because they need the 6v6 on the objective because they only have one tick to give but wave check choosing to wait a little while longer i so close to the emp it's gonna be a lot easier for them to take it once that emp comes through but no he's gonna die but takes it down yeah this this can't happen wave check you're so incredibly close you took down gig forced him onto the desperation ham and just to get back in time however they have drawn the 
the tire out from speedily, but now they've lost another piece of the puzzle. Genji is down, and so very squishy composition. Wave check is running right. You're really curious why Proki's on the Hammond rather than a more traditional Winston, who can take space and provide a bit of protection with that Winston bubble, because Wave check have wild away three minutes of their time. This is their last shot. This has to go off without a hitch. EMP into Nano Blade. They got all the pieces. Now they got to put them together and make a nice puzzle. Wave check will use the EMP. They've got all of their ultimates on the other side, though. A self destruct can change absolutely everything. But I was just about that. They probably rolled them into the false confidence. They have to get the self destruct off. But no, this Dragon Blade is going to be absolutely huge for Wave check. They're so close to getting this pick. And Bud does get the self destruct off. Speedily gets a kill. Speedily gets a second kill. This isn't over just yet. It's XO2 Academy are coming back on the point. And Speedily gets a third kill. Kill. Let's see if it's going to be enough. He's almost at another tire. No oh, one is no! on the point. And that means Wave Check wins speedily. So, so close to being a hero. They're almost got another tire. There wasn't a ton left in terms of supporting speedily on the objective, but Wave Check, they finally do take that map away from XL2 Academy. Very, very close there at the end. They needed all three minutes and 25 seconds to do it. Jade on the Genji got to the blade, and that mm -hmm. seemed to be all that they needed, but speedily made things interesting. That was definitely some playmaking coming from him yeah. rather than you know things just going by the numbers almost to his second tire. That would have been awesome for XL2 Academy, but alas, we're here. Wave check do take the victory on Paris and go to one and one going into the half. Hey, I mean you can you can take the Doomfist skin out, but do you ever take the Doomfist out of his heart? Again, really, just I, really great carry plays from Speedily, unfortunately, not really living up to his name and getting some of his butt on the point. But hey, you can't do it all. Uh, so XL2 will now be tied up against Wave Check. And what do you know? Week six, right? Wave Check <laughs> coming back into things. I, I feel like we keep saying this, and then Wave Check's probably about to, you know do something on hybrid, but you never quite know. This is actually a pretty clean look from a team that has kind of really scrapped its way through a lot of their earlier matches. Yeah, they've, they've definitely cleaned up a lot of their play coming into this game. Last week might have been a reality check for them, but again, things are very, very close. Every time they're about to win, it's so close. There is no domination. There is no pushing those advantages. It seems like it just happens to be at the end that they find themselves on top, but I do think in that situation, you got to clean up the point. Speedily shouldn't have made it interesting there at the end, but he does. And well, he, that's a... he was nanoed, you know, <laughs> Junkrat's already pretty explosive normally. So maybe with that nano just gave him that extra little bit of survivability. But yes, he was a two. He was in a two V one situation right there and should have lost that duel. So it's one one going into halftime between these two teams. We're going to take a six minute break and see how the series concludes.